Do you know that many Cameroonians had never even heard of the word exchange of notes? Many Cameroonians. I, I was insulted. I was insulted. <laughs> <laughs> I was insulted. The only thing I can say to you is Asia, because I am in a similar situation. I understand. <laughs> Asia. <laughs> you see, for, for the first time when I brought, I went and it took me less than ten minutes of doing searches online to go and unearth the exchange of notes that was signed in Yaoundé by Cecil King, the, the uh, British High Commissioner in Yaoundé at the time. And when I published it, ambassador. yes, uh, the uh, ambassador in Yaoundé at the time, when I published it, it was a revelation to many Camero uh, uh, Anglophone Cameroonians. Do you know that? Even the so-called Ambazonians, they had never heard of it or seen it. When, when uh, 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 they mentioned it, uh, uh, they started me and they were asking what, what does it mean, exchange of notes means what, this, this and that. <laughs> coming from so called, so called uh, intellectuals, uh, exactly. Yes, asking me exchange of notes means what? Uh, th that's why our biggest problem starts and uh, it starts and ends with laziness and ignorance. We, we refuse yeah. to we refuse to read we refuse to learn and even when someone provides the evidence in front of us uh, we pretend like we don't see it because we already have a preconceived notion it's true it's true it's true in, in fact uh, 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 in Greece, I know uh, uh, has tried to, to talk to me twice uh, the, on what, whatever whatever and uh, and which is group some of them have called uh, and, and and threaten me that they are, they are going to deal with me. I, I, I try to make them understand. <laughs> I, I am not a politician. politician. I, am a, I, I am a historian. If you have ca ca counterpoints and evidence, bring it. Bring the points. Let's stop. debate it as yeah. intellectuals. Let us stop. But then, don't, uh, don't insult me. Exactly. That I am, I'm a francophone. Uh -huh. I am, I've been bribed by, 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 by the. the the, the government, uh, Sorry. The government people, <laughs> professor, people, uh, I think, professor, <laughs> it's unfortunate. This is what happens when you're dealing with simpletons. When people haven't got the the uh, evidence, or I don't know if uh, when people haven't got the argument to bring to the table, they resort to threats and violence because that is all they know. So and and that's why they will never challenge you to it. And that's why, for example, when I brought the exchange of notes, it was a shocking revelation to many of them. And that's why the only thing they could do was say, "Oh, Brit uh, can you believe people who call themselves barristers living in the United States saying that, as a matter of fact, Britain had no authority to enter into international agreement on behalf of Southern Cameroons." <laughs> <laughs> It is terrible. And do you know what? One of them, one of the arguments, can you believe that someone who claims to have gone to school made this argument? He said that in the Fumban Constitutional Conference, he said, why Why did they ask the British to be there? Why did, why did they not also ask France to be there? <laughs> I did not. I, I honestly did not know where to start to educate that kind of person, so I just ignored it. Cameroon was a sovereign state. It's a sovereign state with a seat at the United Nations. You guys are still under a trusteeship agreement administered by the British. That is why the administering authority was invited to be there. How else do you explain that to them? The mistake they, they, they always make you know, that the uh, Amadou Ahijoto French that uh, the, the, the two will, will discuss as, as a equal partners. Okay, said, when yes, when Amadou, when was uh, uh, when, uh, the uh, question uh, is when when was that? Thank you. And in February 1959, French Cameroon was a trust territory. British Southern Cameroon was a trust territory. So at that time, they could have been equal. That they were equal. Yes. And from 1st January 1960, 1960 when French Cameroon became, became independent, independent and Southern Cameroon was, was still a trust territory, they were no longer equal. Thank you. 
but then they, they they don't they they have difficulty wrapping their tiny brains around that fact but then again it's not a matter of tiny brains it is a matter of belief you you know you know it, it's difficult to make someone change a belief because this is not a matter of intelligence or a matter of intellectual uh, uh, dishonesty they don't care about the facts it's a belief you see that is where that is where our problem lies it's occultic you, 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 you try to make them understand that please for heaven's sake from first january 1960 republic of cameroon and southern cameroon were no longer equal please <laughs> and then how can someone and then another thing is uh barrister ashu emmanuel try to make a link or a, 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 a connection with Canada and and the King of England. Uh -huh. Please, please explain to them the difference between Canada as a, a dominion, Canada as a dominion of the British realm, but not part of the United Kingdom. Because they they're saying that Canada Canada is part of the United Kingdom because the king is is head of state of Canada. No, Canada is a no, sovereign no, state. No, no, yes, and, and, and it, it, even then, even then, Canada uh, was never given to, to to Britain to be administered by any. Uh, organization exactly the UN said the, the British administer Southern Cameroons made it very clear very clear on behalf of the UN uh -uh, calm down it, and the and the funniest thing is it was not just a verbal agreement the agreement was signed on paper <laughs> it's called the trusteeship agreement yes it's yes. there written in black and white no, I, I, I'm so happy that you you have been able to and uh, get in touch with me so, so that we, we can exchange ideas. Yes, and my my point is because in order for us to continue this uh, a thankless job of sensitization and bringing our people to 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 the reality of what is going on in our country, we need to do better with our communication to explain at the very basic level yeah, for example for, ex for example in the in the situation where barista Ashwa Emmanuel kept saying it was a state it was a state please for heaven's sake try to explain to them the difference between Nigeria as a sovereign state and Cross River state as a state there is a difference Cross River or let's take the United States of America is one country it's sovereign and california is a federated state yes california also has its own constitution does that mean california is a country no so with that simple with that simple argument you would have made him you would have put some sense into him and made people understand that just the word state does not mean anything or just the word government case in point the ambazonians have how many government today like six or seven right <laughs> <laughs> you understand put that point to them yes. Sakoy Kome has his government anyone if you create the the uh, Sase, uh students association will you not have a constitution <laughs> will you not form a government some way of governing that organization does that mean that you deserve a seat at the United Nations <laughs> that is no, no we have to mind them it's unfortunate I used to be cynical like you back in the days when I was the kind of person that would have said, oh, don't mind these fools. They don't understand what they're saying. They are just making noise. Unfortunately, there is a vast majority of our population that is gullible to the point of carrying guns and going to the bush based on these lies. And to compound on that reality, these gullible, poorly educated youth target the educated like myself. They almost killed me. You understand? They go after people yeah. like you. They go after people like the former Cardinal Tumi. He's been kidnapped. Nijon Frundi. Uh, the phone on saw. 
uh, the, uh, you know, uh, Dr. Simon Munzu, the inter intellectuals in our society, they go after these people based on the kind of stupid uh, uh, juvenile lies that people like Barista Ashwe Manu spread out there. We were a government, we were a government. A government that could do what? What powers did the government have? That is the question. Okay, let's accept that you were a government. What powers did you have? Did you have the sovereign power? Did you have an army? Did you could you enter into international international uh, 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 um, uh, treaties? Could you uh, open an embassy, a foreign uh, mission in a different country? Who recognized you as a state? That's what matters. Could you pro could you produce uh, international travel documents that were recognized? passports could you print money you understand yeah that is what that is the difference if you had put it that way he himself would have looked stupid you said to you explain to the audience that yes the word state is misused and is misconstrued and people who go to school the learned and educated like a barista ashu here is playing on your intelligence he knows better he knows that any two people that come together and form association can come up with a constitution that does not make that those two people a country to to have international recognition and a seat at the united nations the southern cameroons was a state just like how cross river state is a state within nigeria you understand if you if you had put if you had put that point in in two minutes you could have dismantled his argument say well, i accept that you were a state but a state with no powers you can't print money you don't have an army even if you make a law how do you enforce the law you had no military to back it up so you were useless it's a it's a state that all its powers depended on london all its powers were held in a different country yes you were a state but a state with no powers call yourself a dog a dog without teeth That that is that is that is to the extent with which you can claim you were a state, just like Cross River State is a state with a governor, with a constitution, with a flag, with an anthem. Do they have a seat at the United Nations? Can they print money? Who recognizes them outside of Nigeria? Nobody. Yeah. So that's the difference. Okay, who was your head of state? You call yourself a state. Who was your head of state? <laughs> Yeah, you did not have so one good. because you were not a sovereign state. There's a difference between sovereignty is the supreme, the supreme power that the people have to control themselves, to govern themselves. But in this case, literally, even that constitution that you're quoting had to be admitted and received and signed, but in London. So what power did you? <laughs> yes, yes, yes. It was signed and approved, but in London because you had no supreme power to govern yourself if you had the supreme power to govern yourself it did not need to go to london to be approved it did yeah but in this case when you talk of canada canada does not need to send its constitution or their laws to london to be approved they don't because they are sovereign the people the canadian people have the sovereign power to elect their governors to elect their their, their officials and their and, and their representatives to govern them that is sovereignty they have that sovereign power the king of england has certain powers but it is limited the power that the king of england has over canada is de is deliberately given to the king of england by the people of canada that is sovereignty but in the case of the former southern cameroons the population had no choice who, who 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 which member of the former southern cameroons was there when they were signing the treaty of versailles in france <laughs> which member okay. of the former british southern, southern cameroons was there when the, the british the french and the germans decided to divide that territory amongst themselves which member of the former british southern cameroons was there when the united nations was signing the trusteeship agreement with the uk yeah. it's because we had no sovereignty we had no powers we could not determine what happened to our own territory that is that is the, the the definition of sovereignty if you as a people can determine what happens in your own territory you have the supreme power without the input of anyone else that is what you call a sovereign state failure of any anything below that you are not sovereign and
and the people of Canada have that sovereignty. The people of Australia have that sovereignty. The people of the former British Southern Cameroons could not even cough without the authorization from London. Yeah, yeah. Well, Prof, thank you so much uh, for, for... Thanks a lot, and, uh, and keep in touch. Oh. Yeah, of course, of course, uh, we'll keep in touch. You have my number and I have yours. I, let me pay attention to to <laughs> uh, to this little person who who is yes. Okay, okay. <laughs> no, no. <laughs> okay, we'll talk later. Thank you so much. All right. Okay, thanks. So thank you plenty my country people for them. Uh, we don't come to the end of the live broadcast. Uh, when I bear with me a second, um, do, do, do. so we will look at uh, some of our questions then, and some of your comments then, uh, for see which way we are the talk for the comment section. Thank you, plenty. We we'll get Batman Bass they here with me. If you are here, me, we are leaving the comment section because I I don't know if. Okay, yes, I will confirm and say the audio will be clear. So, um, when I share as when I join as usual, we'll get okay, we'll get this comment from Teguia Konam. <laughs> what a name! He said uh, he is one of the self righteous and confident ignoramuses who inspired the hordes of illiterates to <laughs> become or to because they. Canon for us of an illusionary quest for independence. There you go. We get Meme Central, a comment from YouTube, it talks, eh? and some of these old part them for America know very well, say Professor Julius, if they talk not the truth, but they go still carry their stupidity, it come they argue. And uh, Meme Central again, it talks, eh? this particular barrister and a big time two side class. Anytime I watch it, I feel so sick in my stomach. That is why that his so-called political party is dead on arrival. <laughs> okay, when I leave in a comment in the comment section, if we get any questions, when I want to ask, when I ask them, I'll go answer on our questions um, in a second. So the next comment it comes from uh Debo, Ngo Debo. It talks about Barrister Emmanuel Ashu is not only dishonest or dishonestly ignorant, he is a barrister who is learned to have avoided being ignorant about the history of this british southern cameroons he is dishonest by knowing the stakes but refusing to make adequate research for simple reasons of his lack of crooked wisdom barrister emmanuel Ashu should cease from disgracing himself by pretending to have a mastery of the history of the british southern cameroons he lacks he should look for time to either see mkbd or uh da 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 dash i know he no continue or he continue i know if you see him so we'll get other comments um, in some flex it talks say he's very dishonest man that is why he needs to use intimidation tactics shouting everywhere <laughs> that's it some people who shout are people who are usually clueless and they're trying to impose their viewpoint by speaking louder than everyone else we'll get ngwa elvis chair it talks say he's a very dishonest man i agree and i don't i don't know which is worse the dishonesty or ignorance uh because for be ignorant it's possibly worse but then again for be dishonest means say you know the truth and then you go out there go deliberately lie and that lie it cause people their death actually i think say the, the dishonesty it be worse than ignorance because an ignorant person once you show you the truth they will see the truth it go recognize the truth and it go uh, agree with the truth and then it go stop for the spread the lies. But a dishonest person, he know the truth and then he go out there for go spread the lies anyway. So I think that the dishonesty be worse. Um, we we'll get uh, Boris Jones Tembago talks. Say, I wonder why he's always called senior barrister Ashu. Listen, now a Cameroonian thing. There is no such position called senior barrister or a rank called senior barrister. Now, just that Cameroonian thing with people, they love titles. Person will be now just um, administrator for WhatsApp group. All man for that WhatsApp group. Can okay, you meet up in now for different Jangi house or now for market? You start calling now admin, admin. Any person make 
some teacher just making a senior divisional a senior discipline master they recall them for some primary school or whatever or for some secondary school or whatever all man for the whole world now go call you go know say this guy na 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 uh, uh, dm or discipline master they go start calling cameroonians love titles regardless how empty the titles they be now something we, we we really need to do something about it's a cultural issue they love titles now why do i want to say even these anglophone people them they don't go create these internet governments them say uh, ig ig whatever nonsense empty titles but go try for take one of the titles for them say they go kill you <laughs> <laughs> this one will call itself president, secretary of this, uh, the deputy defense chief, commander in chief. The, the Cameroonians love titles. It, no matter how empty and stupid and useless the title be, they love it. Now, what are you see some people they go go do PhD just because they want me to call them that thing, say doctor. Ask you, say, how does that doctor thing or the title, how does it improve your quality of life? It doesn't. But I just say, hey, one. Because of that empty title, it, it will get a position in society. It like when they call it that title because it will distinguish you from other people or it will get some, some level of extra uh, prestige or respect, I guess. You know, respect where you know, earn them. You know, deserve them. You just want empty titles. You just want me to call you... Uh, someone them that... Imagine say some person, for example, you will get a first degree in engineering. Oh man, go start calling an engineer Agbo, engineer Peter. What does that even mean? <laughs> you understand? So if you get first degree in engineering, what does that mean? The only time any person care about that first degree now, when you apply for a job, you put it in your curriculum vitae. They could not say, okay, now your level of qualification this. What does it mean to work at? So you be mechanic, you go, oh man, work at they don't say now mechanic. Uh, I should that now mechanic uh, James. Yeah empty useless titles them so we'll get a panty a panty valentine he talks that he is so dishonest to speak the truth remember this same man asked sako group to give him five billion to be a lawyer for ayuktabe but <laughs> i don't know if that is true or not i have no idea what you're saying whether it's true whether he wanted to be a lot his their lawyers or what what not that is um we'll get uh the congo vitalis he talks that actually emmanuel the one supporter of Amba is dishonest and evil man. He is one of those like Agwabala who contributed to escalate the killings of civilians and security forces in the southwest and the northwest region. But thank you for plenty for our opinions there. Mad see if some people only other comments then. We'll get um now one second, Mad see some comments then. In Sobu service them. It talks say I don't let to take uh we'll get <laughs> I just read now some comments there. I mean that all comments that I want to put them on the screen for now. Okay, we'll get this particular comment. Uh Thomas Ekali. It talks say thank you for bringing Professor Ongo to your show. His analysis of Southern Cameroon's politics uh and has always been to the point he's a historian he just presents history you know the politician it's not just about his opinions or analysis it's just what the history is things that have happened and then we try to understand why they happened the way they happened that's it so uh we'll get another comment we'll get ade anthony fumi it talks that's a bayangi man for you they thrive from end <laughs> it say that's a bayangi man for you they thrive on empty pride <laughs> uh, okay that one are plenty oh man we don't it don't join we for this live broadcast we don't make them it don't be now almost one hour i try for make her make it not be more than one hour so for now when they come late make her play for the old the video where they make them where it talk about the uh, former British Southern Cameroons, where it make it bring me out for coming make this presentation today. When I listen for one minute, just one or two minutes of the life of which where you talk, and then we will play our kum kum anthem, uh, just for bring home the point. When I listen, when you look at the situation, mm -hmm. we had Southern Cameroons had a constitution. The Republic of Cameroon had a constitution. 
This is the constitution of the Republic of Cameroon. Constitution of fourth March 1960. This is their constitution. And this is the one of Southern Cameroon. But when you look at the historic historical facts they're putting, they, they, they downplay the Southern Cameroon constitution and make as if it was nothing. It was a non existent inexistent document. This constitution was enacted by the British institutions, the Queen of England, the highest authority. No Englishman has ever challenged not, not it. You see, I, I, I'm not agreeing with no, that. No, let him no, I'm not agreeing with that. Let him not. Uh, because prof, he, he prof, gives the impression that I'm, I'm arguing. What, what, what I'm saying is this. You are just stating this, the point. Yeah, here. this is what Southern Cameroon, the, the, the delegation, should have presented. Britain was that can you modify this constitution after the talks? This constitution of 4th of March 1960. When, when, it was, when, the constitution, when the constitution was enacted and presented, where were, my problem is, where were the, 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 the southern Cameroonian politicians? He, he just told you that most of them were not even aware of that constitution. He just told you. Because Fonsha took it and hid it. Most of them were not even aware. Yeah, but I just read, I just read the, the, the commissioner who says that the guys, he's suggesting that they should engage, um, what do you call, you call it um, exchange of notes, yeah. and that they should go and discuss it. And he, and he says that um, Motombi Walita raised a question. Okay, I want to agree with all that. I am saying that okay. in the presence of this constitution, mm -hmm. we have a state with okay. full powers, with parliament, with government, with civil service, with judiciary, with everything. You cannot, in the presence of this, rely on exchange of notes. You cannot. Okay, my contributor. So when I don't hear wait to wait, uh, Barista Ashu and Manuel come off for talk. And that is the dishonest or ignorant part of it. Because first of all, as they talk, the so-called constitution of Southern Cameroon was adopted but in London by a foreign entity, the colonial powers. Whereas the constitution of the Republic of Cameroon was adopted by the parliament in Cameroon, signed into law by the president, the head of state of the Republic of Cameroon. See, head of state of Cameroon, sign up. So why did you, who call yourself a state, not also have your own constitution signed by your own head of state? Who was your head of state if you claimed that you had a state? It's because you were not a state. You were not sovereign. Everything had to come from London because you were a colonized people. Simple as that. I don't know how difficult that one be for you for understanding. And also by the virtue of the fact that this territory being a trust territory, it being a, a trusteeship agreement between the United Nations and the United Kingdom for the administration of the Cameroons under British administration. The Cameroons, including the Northern Cameroon and the British Southern Cameroon. Okay? So, if you claim, say, that territory to be being a state, so what about Northern Cameroons? Were they also a state? That is the question. And then also, if you claim, say, you get constitution, fine, more talks, you get the constitution. The constitution will be adopted in London and signed by the British for give you limited powers for do certain things then. Limited, very limited. Okay? If they like you delegate some of your powers to some person, it no me, it no means that person, if I be president, I delegate my powers for uh international relationship to my minister of external relations that it doesn't mean that minister of external relations become the head of state no it get limited powers of which you act on my behalf i don't delegate my powers to you now which our parliament for london if we delegate some powers them to the people for british southern Cameroon for money certain affairs them on their own but with the with the notion and with the understanding say at any time the powers that be in london can take away that power, can take away, can dissolve your parliament, can 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 disband everything, can even take you and attach you to a different country, like they will take an attachment to Nigeria without your consent. You have no, no you have no say because you are not a state. You, you cannot you cannot change because they have the supreme power, the authority to do anything they want to do with that territory, as per the agreement in the trusteeship agreement. So it, it be either extremely dishonest or just stupid and ignorant for study talk about uh, the so-called constitution of the british southern Cameroons. and like i talk the powers where the british they get them for enact that constitution for southern Cameroons comes from the trusteeship agreement and the trusteeship agreement itself was terminated by the british exchange of notes with cameroon giving the sovereignty of that territory to president amadou Ahijo. So by that 
termination of the trusteeship agreement, Britain no get no other authority or no other powers over that territory. They no, so that constitution itself becomes null and void. It is put down for being. It doesn't even make sense anymore for even refer to that nonsense from the 1st of October 1961. That nonsense makes no sense because they don't cancel the trusteeship agreement where it will give the power and authority for the British for given under that constitution. That constitution was given to you by the British because you were not a state. Where I don't know how to explain I'm again my contributor. It'd be very simple. It'd be very simple, but now because of the dishonesty, we don't make them now. This where they wrap themselves in, in like pretzels and they do mental gymnastics to try to lie about something. It'd be very plain and simple. But again, now because they, they talk now to people the way they understand, say they be uh, simpletons or they be poorly educated and people the way they know. And the problem as well, where we get them now, say the people the way they go for go debate them. The other intellectuals, the way they go debate these kind of charlatans, they know they come prepared with facts, with 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 with, with arguments the way it could be compelling. You need to challenge them. If I if I debate this kind of person, I ask you two or three questions, you yourself will start to stammer. You could start to go, but, 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 but. you provide me constitution. I ask you just one question out of that. You know the fit answer. Okay, you provide two constitutions, say that constitution for Cameroon this, that constitution for southern Cameroon this. Uh, fine, fantastic. Now tell me who authorized that constitution for become law. Your argument falls apart. The, the head of state for Republic of Cameroon authorized constitution for your own country. Why would our own head of state not be fit authorized in our own constitution? Did you have a head of state? No, it's because you were not a state. It's as simple as that. It had to be done by a different country because that country be owned the sovereign power over your territory. It's as simple as that. The man, the act, like say no, understand, said a certain thing, a document, an international agreement existed called the trusteeship agreement. And how was that trusteeship agreement terminated? Simple exchange of notes. My contributor. Hail, hail, hail the Kumkumasa. We the Cameroonians we pledge our loyalty. Kumkumasa. Kumkumasa, you shall free a country from terror, and your blessing shall be like the stars above. The Most High God shall be your guide.